What are you doing? You having a good time? Little morning pool party? Oh, okay. Got the nice camera out. Gotta come up and shake off on me, huh? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. So, what are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got a gorilla cart full of some soil over here that I need to mix up because I just got a very large package in the mail. Very, very, very large. Long, I should say. A very long package. Powered Palms, the site I stumbled upon a few years ago when I was just trying to get some coconuts. I wanted some nice fresh green ones and noticed that they sell plants. I've ordered from them a few times since then. Generally we've gotten coconut palms and heliconias. They have a pretty good selection and they shipped very quickly. I just placed this order late last week and here I am middle of the next week and it's already here. First observation I have with this package. One end is very heavy, the other end is very heavy. So I'm assuming that they're going both directions in here. There's probably not a this side up thing that should have been on the box. The holes that are in there, I was just being lazy. I didn't feel like taping over my address and everything. So I just took the box cutter and cut it out. Seemed easier to do things that way. I'm sure that's enough backstory. You probably just want to know what's in here. What's in here is exciting. I have a couple of vichis, vichias, I should say, Montgomery's and a coconut palm. I've wanted to get my hands on a vichy, vichia. I'm going to keep calling them vichis throughout the video. It's just, it's a bad habit. I have all these palm trees out here that get stored away for the winter time. And the people who run the greenhouse, they've been informing me that they have much better luck overwintering the vichias over the edinidia palms. The edinidia palms need more heat. And apparently these just fly by better with the more mild conditions that they have in the greenhouse. You also, I'm sure, are not thrilled with the way I'm opening this. I don't wanna try and pull these out from the ends. I feel like they probably have enough going on from potentially being tossed upside down and all over the place the last few days. So I'm just going to very slowly and very patiently use the box cutter to just slice the top off. That way I can very gently lift them out of the container. Yeah, okay, so far, I mean, I can't see much, but I like what I see. So that's the fun background story of the reason I got some vichias. The vichias are a very interesting palm. They hold their fronds just a smidge bit more upright than you would see with something like an adenidia where they arch down, they have longer pinnae. Just a very graceful palm. You can see they have a, a darker crown shaft with some black and some powder texture on the inside like you would see with a um what's it a foxtail palm okay are they taped in or if they've been secured in any way are they just flopping around in here nothing to hold them in place they're just free balling in here i think that's all right these are fairly sturdy palms not worried about that this coconut's freaking huge look at the size of that thing it's a big palm to be shipping up here with the coconuts you can order them up to six feet tall which i assume would be whatever this package right here would be for, right? That seems like a 72 inch box. I ordered the 60 inch, not entirely sure why, just that's the one I picked out. Not sure, but just guessing that if I had ordered one of the 72 inch coconuts, it would probably be the same size because this one was bent over in the package. They couldn't put anything any larger than this in here. I'm going to go ahead and get these potted up and I'll go over the mixture that I'm using real quick. It's nothing fancy. It's basically a 50 50, well, not quite a 50 50 blend. We'll say a 40 40 blend of all purpose potting mix and ocean forest potting mix. And then the, the what is that? The rest of the 20% is probably just sand. There's already good chunky material in there. There's some coconut chunk, nice various sizes of perlite. So this should hold on to some moisture, but still drain very well and be nice and airy. Coconuts, you can go really heavy on the sand or not for me since they're coming inside during the winter time. I like for them to have a little bit more in their mix than just being like a 50-50 or even 60-40 blend of a potting mix to sand. There it is. There's the potting mix. I'm going to pot them up and we can have a better look at them. I'm just going to give everyone a drink with some root simulator because their roots were fairly well chopped up. That's a fresh mix, so it's got to bubble down. I've watered them in. Give them about three waterings and get that soil nice and saturated before adding the root stimulator. I think these look pretty dang good considering, you know, what they cost and that they were just shipped up here. I'm very pleased. These are not plants 
that I ever see in the nurseries up here. Occasionally you see the coconuts, but when you do, they're very pricey. I've managed to get a hold of a couple of more, a couple more coconuts recently at my local nurseries. And they weren't cheap either. One's about this big. I've seen at the local nurseries in much larger containers than this, usually in like a 15 to 20 gallon pot. And the coconuts might be a foot taller than this. And they're like $425. Isn't that crazy? $420, that's just nuts. I, I've been down south plenty of times. I see the coconuts at the nurseries. These things are not usually expensive. So it's nice to be able to get them for a more affordable price. The 60 inch one I think was like $50. And then shipping came out to an average of like 33 bucks, $35, something like that per plant. Shipping's not cheap, but you know, when I think about it, there are nurseries like Plant Delights, who I love, but I've spent about a hundred bucks on shipping from them before and their plants are much smaller. Usually that's only with very large orders, but still size matters. So if I'm gonna be spending a hundred bucks on shipping, I, it's just more satisfying. You're getting nice big plants. I'd end up adding back some of the native soil that was around their roots just because that has lots of beneficial mycorrhiza and microbes to help get those roots going again. I don't know if they were dug up or if they were pulled, not sure. The coconut did not have much going on as far as roots are concerned, which I wasn't surprised by. I've ordered from them before and that tends to be how they do things. So I knew that that was going to be the case. And that's why, like I mentioned, I didn't want to put the coconut in a blend that was basically just sand. It needs some nutrient in there to get those roots going. And it helps them out here in the winter a lot because they're inside and having something that holds on to some more moisture than sand it just makes life easier for me. It's less watering for me. They don't need a lot of watering during the winter time. When I have the coconuts in a blend that is just mostly sand, the watering is ridiculous. My grow space is fairly warm these days during the winter time. So that's a blend that works the best for me. I will be making sure to keep these in a spot that is out of the sun, especially with our upcoming forecast. It's supposed to be you know, in the hundreds potentially for a few days, Fahrenheit that is. So filtered light and then shade throughout the rest of the day until I start to see signs of active growth out of them. Then I'll start transitioning them to getting more sunlight. So the vichias, talk about coconut palms lots. I have multiple videos on coconut palms. I'll link those at the end of the video and put a thing down at the bottom in the description, a link, that's what it's called. I'll put a link in the description. The vichias though, they are the whole reason I placed the order. There are two types of palms that I would really like to start growing it just to experiment with and those are the vichias and the arcantro phoenix king palms i'd like to try the alexandre maybe the cunningham it's just a matter of wanting things to be easier <laughs> during the winter time adenidia palms which i don't think you'll be able to see them from here but they're over there i have a few of them over there and there's there's one over you can kind of see it over there you see it right right there by my finger adenidia palm they'll always have a special place in my heart but they're a pain in the butt during the winter time. You need a good amount of warmth for them and lots and lots and lots of light to keep them in active growth, which I can pull off in my grow space for a few years, but eventually the adenidias outgrow it and they have to go off to a greenhouse where my larger palms are stored. They don't keep that greenhouse very warm. They usually struggle with the adenidias. Last winter was pretty mild, so the adenidia palms did very well for them. But they mentioned to me that they've been trying to transition people over to these vichias. I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. And the gassia palms, which are these right here. See these chunks? These little chunks. Love the gassia palms. They're not the fastest of growers. They do have some very interesting trunks on them. The reason that they're doing that transition is because they're just overwintering better for them in a greenhouse that they don't keep incredibly warm, probably between like 50 and 70 degrees, something like that. The vichias also, from everything I've read about them, a lot of people talk about how they handle the swings of temperatures better. So a lot of people in SoCal, like Orange County area, by a lot, I mean like maybe three people on Palm Talk, <laughs> but there were people who were nerdy enough with their palms to get on and talk about how their vichias are doing in their climate, where sometimes the temperatures can be soaringly hot. And then in the winters, you may have some nights where things are plummeting into the 40s, maybe even the 30s, and occasionally even some light frost. The consensus is that the vichias have been doing great. And I know the adenidias, they don't do so great over there. So I thought that alone was a good enough reason to go ahead and give them a try. Plants that can take swings like that are usually more 
sturdy when it comes to winter survival. I'm obviously not going to be trying to get these to live out here during the winter time. That's not going to happen. Heck, we had two weeks where it was below negative 10 Fahrenheit last winter. There's no way these would survive. But it's just one more thing that I would be able to have off my mind during the off season, is what I call basically October through March when my plants are inside, is having to worry about the swings. You take them from being outside in October when our nighttime temperatures are dropping into the 40s, sometimes into the upper 30s, I get really nervous with the adenidias when that's happening because we can go from it being in the 90s and a few days later we might have lows in the 30s. That can happen. The adenidias, they don't like that. They start to get lots of spots on them and look pretty icky. The vichias, maybe it's going to be the same thing. I don't know. I also just like their growth habit. They have a really nice growth habit that's similar to an adenidia in the sense that it's a solitary smooth trunked palm. That's, I guess that's about it. <laughs> there you go. Of course, you could say the same thing about a foxtail palm, which don't really look like adenidias, but they can have a similar trunk if they're grown in the right conditions in the right climate. There's a lot more I can talk about with the Vichia palms that would just require a lot of deep diving that I don't feel like doing. There's been debate over the last decade or more about whether or not the Montgomery Vichia is its own plant and appears to be synonymous with Vichia ericina. And then a lot of the newer information is saying that there are just a lot of hybrids and crosses between some of the Vichias. I don't feel like digging into all that. There are some ways, according to people, to decipher between the two people saying that there are differences, mostly with like the shapes and lengths of the leaflets and the tips and whatnot. I don't, I don't care about that. It's a Montgomery palm. That's what they were labeled as, it's what they were sold to me as, so that's what we're going to be researching them as and growing them as. Something I'm a sucker for with palm trees that just that really gets me is when they will start to have smooth trunk and actual like scars, the rings on their trunks at a smaller size. And these will do that, which is another, that's why I'm so drawn to Edenidias, because they'll trunk at a smaller size. I think that's just a growing up north thing, or Midwest, everybody who lives up north says St. Louis is the south, whatever, you know what I mean. We don't really have palm trees here. Some people are growing needle palms and sable miners like myself and the extremists will wrap up their boutillas and windmill palms, but those days are over for me. I don't feel like doing all that. Those aren't palms where you get that satisfying smooth trunk. And even at the nurseries up until I don't know, 20 years ago, growing up as a child, all you ever saw were majesty palms, which just look like giant ferns at a nursery, right? So there's just something really fun and appealing about having something that's going to trunk, even at a smaller size. You can already see on one of these, I, I don't actually know if you guys are gonna be able to see it, but this one already has a couple of rings. Looks like when this old leaf base is ready to come off, which it probably almost is, then there'll be a third. So. That's exciting. I like to just have, just give me some skinny poles with leaves. I think that'll be adorable. The Vici is though, I say the skinny pole thing and immediately go, I need to correct myself on that. They can have a pretty nice bulbous trunk, similar to an Edenidia, if grown in the right climate. Indoors, I'm not expecting that. Or just in conditions like I grow the palms and a lot of people who are watching these videos grow the palms where you have them outside for part of the year and then inside for part of the year. So there's a lot of fluctuation between temperature, humidity, and moisture in general, right? With how the plants are being watered. It's harder to get those really thick, thick trunks on the palms when you don't have the consistency. The coconut, obviously that could go into full sun. The vichias, they seem to be good, part shade to full sun. At a smaller size, it's a general rule of thumb. Doesn't hurt to make sure that they're getting afternoon shade. And like I said, since these have some rooting to do, quite a bit of rooting to do. I'm not gonna be putting them in the sun anytime soon, especially with the extreme temperatures that we have coming up. Oh, height. That might be something you wanna know about, right? Since I'm talking about growing these indoors more so than outdoors or transitional outdoor to indoor seasonally, if you're growing things the way I am. The Vichias, information scattered, looks like 25 to 40 feet. It's a very broad range. Some sites say 20 to 30, some say 25 to 35. Some say 30 to 40, I, I don't know. Indoors, I wouldn't expect them to grow all that quickly. They are going to be similar to an Alexander palm, or I should say the Tycho's form of Elegans, where they should be a fairly fast grower. Take that with a grain of salt, because it's still a palm tree, up to a certain height. My Alexander palm went from 
six feet to about 12 to 14 feet in just a matter of years. And once it hit about 14, 15 feet, its growth really plateaued and slowed down. I don't know where their slowdown point is. I'm not really certain. I don't know if I'll even be able to find that out this year because these got some root to do, right? So it's gonna be a minute till they really take off and do much. Point there though is that you could probably keep them in the house for a fair number of years, depending on the height of your ceilings before they get too big. Yeah, overall consensus from what I see from other people who are growing the Vichias as a house plant, or again, like I am transitionally, is that they're just more sturdy. They do better with the indoor conditions and the drier air conditions than you would get with something like an Edenity. I'm not saying it's a sturdy palm tree, just in comparison to the palm trees that you see the most frequently that have those nice smooth trunks on them at the nurseries, which are generally Edenidia palms. Where they come from though, climate, very similar. South Pacific, Vanuatu, into the parts of the Philippines, I believe, just like with the Edenidia morelii. So you would think they would want the same thing, but apparently these just aren't as finicky, according to people who are growing them indoors. Still a spider mite magnet from what I'm told, which is no surprise at all. They look like spider mite magnets. You know how sometimes you just look at a plant and you go, oh yeah, yeah, spider mites would just love to chew on that penne. They'd have a field day making their little webby nests all over those leaflets. I can see that with these. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Message boards from people who are growing them in SoCal where the humidity is much lower <laughs> than in the Philippines but they're still saying that these are doing okay for them when situated properly and just some sightings of some out like along street sides and stick out in people's yards where they wouldn't expect to be seeing these growing and they're doing okay there with the more arid climate then that tells you as far as the humidity goes probably not going to be as big of a brat indoors as again an adenidia hope that's not too many adenidia comparisons but this is a potential substitute for me for adenidias you gotta pause for an airplane I am definitely going to have to put a stake in this coconut palm. I already grabbed one. It's ready to go. You can tell. Just look at it. Look at that container. You just know that thing's going to be blowing all over the place. It's going to get weird and wonky in there. It doesn't have a lot of rootage to hold itself in place. So staking it, going to be a good idea. And then even once it's staked, the wind's going to want to blow that pot right over. I could have used a more squat pot for it, but I wanted it to have something deeper to establish its roots into. I thought that this was just a better idea. So what I may end up doing with this palm tree is taking it over to where I have my Alexander palm in the garden and faux planting it, just dig a hole, drop the whole pot in there. So I don't have to worry about the pot tipping over and it'll look like there's just a random coconut grown out of the ground in that area. And that's a look that I'm fine with, naturalizes things. And then I can just pop it out of the ground and move it into the growth space the area, gets filtered light because the Alexander palm above it. It might do well over there. I don't know, we're gonna find out. Main thing is I have to make sure to get this staked so it doesn't move around too much. That's probably not a great idea. I'll set that down. Okay, I don't have anything else to say. That was a fun unboxing. The palm trees look great for what they cost and just the fact that they aren't palm trees that I ever see for sale here where I live. So I'm just happy to have them. I'll keep everybody posted during the garden tours on how they're doing. I need to make sure to pay attention to the number of fronds that they have. Cause like I said, need to track their active growth before I can start moving them into getting more sunlight. Comment down below. Any other palm nerds out there? I'm sure y'all have a lot to say, especially those of you down in Florida. I'm sure you have tons to add. The Montgomery palms, very common down there. To my understanding, pretty sturdy. I, I don't know, but y'all tell me. Different climates, we're gonna be growing these very differently, but it's still fun to hear what people have to say about them when they're growing them outside, especially if you're growing them inside. Comment down below, what do you have to offer? Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. All right, thanks for hanging out. I know it was a long one, but I got the... As I was saying, right as I was doing my outro, Turbo started barking and then had a palm tree delivery. Got some new palms here, which are backlit and you can't see. You can see this one. Got this big queen over here that I already had. It was repotted. Be talking about the big palm delivery in the video that comes out after this one. For now, just gonna finish saying goodbye. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.